this is going to be a fun little experiment. Uh, what we have here is a Savage, Savage Model 64. Um, whenever you have firearms, often the with with a number in it, often the number designates the the, the date, of the year that it was designed, or the year even in production. Uh, I'm not sure which one is uh, is a 64. This one I believe is probably the year it went into production. But anyway, this is a Savage Model 64. Uh, 22, 22 rifle. It shoots uh, 22 long rifle or 22. So uh, um, it'd be cool if they ever made these in 22 Magnum, but I don't think they uh, will ever will. Anyway, um, I like 22s. They're they're fun to shoot. They're cheap to shoot. Um, ammo is is uh, pretty plentiful and uh, rather expensive. Not the way it used to be. Uh, I can remember back when I could get a, a 500 uh, round brick uh, like Remington Thunderbolts for like you know. Ten dollars or something like that, a nine nine ninety nine or something like that. Nowadays, uh, I think uh, a five hundred round brick of uh, thunderbolts is like thirty something dollar, forty dollars or something. Anyway, um, this uh, this farm here, the twenty two here, I want a, a couple, a couple twenty twos. Um, I now years ago I had a Savage ninety four, that had a Woodstock, and back in the day, uh, Woodstocks were normal. The fine one with a polymer stock was sort of uh, sort of uh, the the oddball. Nowadays, everything is polymer, and the fine one with, with the wood stock is the oddball. But uh, yeah, years ago I had a, a savage a savage sixty four that had a wood stock, and I think I traded it or sold it or something. I think uh, one of my coworkers wanted the twenty two or something, and I came here. It was years ago, uh, and then uh, I ended up owning one. Uh, once I ended up owning a a, a Ruger ten twenty two. Now the Ruger 1022 is a nice rifle. Um, this here probably cost me around 160. Uh, I do remember my uh, my old Savage back in the day cost me like 119 dollars, 116 dollars, something like that. Uh, the Ruger, the Rugers are probably double this price, uh, which sort of means uh, they're better, better quality, I guess. Maybe assuming I don't know. Uh, the Rugers, uh, the mags, the little rotary mags, are pretty cool mags. This has a weird um, little zinc. It's made in Canada, of course. That's a, like a zinc 10 round mag. Uh, nothing special. You know, just a real 10, 10 round mag. The, the cool thing about the Rugers is uh, 1022 is you can get a little 10 round rotary, rotary mag or you can get a, uh, you know, 30 round mag and drum mags. And it's, uh, it's a whole lot more accessorized than these uh, Ruger uh, 64s are. But either way, <clears> the <throat> one thing I had with I only one, one problem I had with the the Ruger um, that I don't have with this or even one I had before this is uh, the to the tolerances on the bolt for the Ruger were a lot more tighter, a lot more tighter, um, more tighter, tighter, more tighter. Uh, this here is sort of it's a little clunky. It's um, Um, I wouldn't say it's, it's not loose. It's just uh, I can shoot a lot more, you know, like Thunderbolts. Um, you know, I can get them some some low end cheap ammo and uh, shoot this a lot longer in between cleanings than my Ruger. I remember my Ruger would not get through a 500 round box of uh, Thunderbolts. It just wouldn't do it. Thunderbolts is sort of a low end ammo. It's dirty. It's they're sooty. Um, what you're gonna see in this one here, because this one here, uh, it's a little test I'm doing. Uh, this is a little foreshadowing of the test. Um, I shot this uh, it's about uh, 100, 150 rounds um, sights, iron sights. I shot about 150 rounds with a cheap $20 um, air rifle um, scope that uh, was a piece of piece of junk. And I shot another 100 and uh, about 150 rounds or so of this uh, this True Glow. True Glow. This is like a $50 ish scope. Uh, you, you buy these at Academy. Um, also, I bought, you can buy my Amazon for about the same price. I got this on Amazon. Um, but uh, this can be an interesting test because I want to shoot uh, about the same amount of ammo, the same kind of ammo, at the same distance. Um, just to see what kind of accuracy I get. And then I want to switch to uh, some uh, CCI Stingers because the Stingers are a uh, much, uh, much quality ammo I guess better better ammo uh, the uh, the cases are you know br uh, brass uh, brass case a uh, brass uh, case with a nickel nickel coating on it 
Um, I think the velocities on Stingers are like 1600 feet per second versus like 1200 feet per second for um, Thunderbolts. So your velocity is a hot crate, you know, crazy higher. I, call, I, I figure stingers are like the plus P in the ammo, like 22 ammo world. Um, and the, the results for these things uh, are, are sort of shocked me. And um, I'm still going to play play around with it because I'm, I'm, you know, we, you know, <laughs> trying, to, trying to explain what I'm trying to explain what I'm trying to say. Um, in in the in the the center fire world. Uh, for rifles, whether it be 5.56 or, you know, 308s and, and, and you know, those kind of, you know, Creed Moors, whatever. Um, there is often a sweet, a sweet spot for ammo weight and, and twist rate in the rifle. And, uh, some rifles will shoot some ammo beautifully and some rifles will shoot, uh, the same ammo, different, different bullet weight. Uh, and all of a sudden you have flyers and shit in, in your, your, uh, point of impact is shifting all over the place and I never really thought about that in the 22 world because most times in 22 you're not shooting you know more than 50 yards um open sights I mean I started looking at that through open sights I'm like man if I try to shoot a squirrel at 50, at 50 yards that's a, that's a pretty good long shot um so take it to, take it to the range um now I want to be honest right now I've, I've already I've already took it to the range um, that twenty dollar, the twenty dollar twenty scope I have on this, I threw it away. Yeah, it was one hundred percent absolute garbage. I couldn't, I couldn't. Uh, f um, I was sitting there just playing with the focus. I could not get it to focus right. Um, so the the target downrange was blurry. The crosshairs were blurry. Um, for a twenty dollar scope that was really uh, advertised as an air rifle slash twenty two scope, it was a piece of garbage. So let's take it to the range. Um, and, uh, <laughs> I already took it to range. Let's take it out and, uh, and show the results of iron sights, cheap scope. And again, 50 bucks, $50, a $50 dollar, dollar 22 scope is not in any way, that shape or form, a expensive scope. It's still really budget. But then again, I'm not gonna put it like a, I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna drop a hundred dollars or more. Cause I'm, I, in my, in my theory in shooting, Especially with a budget, you know, budget that I have, a budget shooting, um, my scope will never approach the price of the rifle, uh, or surpass it for sure. So, uh, look, looking at a hundred, hundred and fifty dollar rifle, you're looking at a fifty dollar scope. Uh, most of my AK scopes, um, they're 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 no more than they're they're all less than three hundred bucks. So the idea of me putting a, a high end scope on a twenty two is just not going to happen today. So anyway, that's that's enough jibber jabber. Let's take it to the range, put some uh, uh, holes on paper, and see what we get. So here we go. The Remington 22 Thunderbolt. Uh, back in the day, this was the staple of my childhood. Um, you can get a, a box of this, and you can shoot absolutely all day long. My grandfather had an old, uh, old Sears and Roebuck uh, 22. Fun little gun. Anyway, um, I shoot, um, I'm trying to shoot about, uh, 150-ish rounds, um, uh, each, each session, try to keep it somewhat consistent. So this session here is the uh, open sights, um, 20 Thunderbolt is, a uh, 40 round, uh, lead round, um, again, it's, it's a value pack, it's a bulk value, budget-minded ammo, so it's not, a. um, believe it or not, this, this, uh, session here, I didn't find any duds. A lot of times in the ammo, uh, both in the uh, budget ammo world, you will get a box that has um, a handful or two of rounds just, just, just to go click. And not this time. So anyway, this is uh, 50 yards. Um, I wish I had more, more than just one, one mag. Yeah, make uh, makes this a little bit easier. Maybe one of these I'm best in buying some mags. I think I think Academy sells them, and they're they're not all that expensive. Uh, they're just made of a, a stamp, uh, a stamp or uh, no, actual extruded or stamped zinc. Um, but as you can see, uh, the 22 is fun to shoot. Uh, this uh, this firearm uh, fought, uh, shot flawless, no problems, no uh, no failure, failures to eject, uh, load. Um, it's a great little 22. In fact, Savage is sort of known for his accuracy. So let's see how, how we did. 
So, uh, now those little the little uh, rounds you see on the the, the, the right hand side, ignore those. Um, I had a bunch of just surplus targets, and that was uh, probably from when I was uh, zeroing in a, a, a AR or something. Um, but yeah, for uh, for uh, open sites, that is where they impact that. Now, test number two, cheap twenty dollar scope. Now this scope, uh, again, I'm gonna say it was garbage. Um, it, it, nothing I could do to get the target and those crosshairs on the same focal plane. Um, and you know, I couldn't even get the target and the crosshairs by themselves actually focusing. Um, the crosshairs are fuzzy and the target's fuzzy. Uh, this was like a little uh, four power, four power, um, I think it's like a 30 millimeter uh, uh, tube. So yeah, this is very, very low, uh, uh, low, low quality scope, air rifle scope. Now the one thing I could not control was the wind. Um, here in Texas, in Houston, it's been hot, very hot, and um, I could. Uh, when the wind blows, it blows, and it's like a, a hair dryer in your face. Uh, so I couldn't control the wind. That's why you see the camera sometimes, and some videos sort of wiggling back and forth, because that's just the wind blowing. Again, uh, this session here, uh, it shot flawless. Uh, the rifle shot flawless. The ammo, you know, cooperated. Um, again, it was the same, uh, about 100, 150-ish. Um, rounds. I can't remember exactly how many, but it was about 150. So let's see how we did. Um, for cheap, cheap scope with the cheap ammo, um, I pretty much drilled the center of that target out, and uh, I was I was happy with that. And then I switched to a uh, $50 scope. This is a True Glow. Again, you can buy my Academy. You can buy them. Uh, Amazon, they're about fifty, you know, fifty dollars, fifty-five dollars. You know, depending where you where you get it from. Um, the 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 glass came out of the box absolutely focused um, on target, target focused, crosshairs focused, absolutely on on, on point. Uh, the same Thunderbolt twenty twos, in fact, same box, same lot number, um, and this had a very interesting um, um, outcome. In fact, if he, I was even sitting at the same uh, the same boot, uh, shooting booth. Now, one thing I didn't do that hindsight maybe I should have done um, through all these sessions, I didn't clean the rifle. Um, I, I wanted to shoot it, and um, again, the, the Thunderbolts um, they are they're dirty. Uh, it gives you bullet finger like you wouldn't you wouldn't know just coming out of the box. And uh, I was really hoping that uh, this scope here would really tighten, would tighten the groups up just for it, just because it was a better scope. And um, it, it's, it's the, the, the results kind of kind of surprised me. Now the gun uh, a shot, a shot fought lot flawless. The ammo was flawless, so I didn't have any problem in either one of those in this in this session. And uh, but the results downrange were interesting. So, downrange, again, I pretty much drilled a hole through the paper, and yeah, in, in most, you know, most most times I'm happy with that. Um, but I was surprised it didn't do better than a $20 scope, because again, $20, $20 scope was blurry and, and just you couldn't see the target early. So I decided to up the game a little bit, get the 32 grain CCI stingers. Now, the this this ammo here is sort of known for being higher quality. It's higher price for one thing. It's like it's like ten dollar ten dollar for um for box for box fifty, versus you know the others like you can probably get ten dollar for like five you know 10, fifty rounds for like 10, five, five, five bucks seven bucks something like that. Um, <clears throat> so I expected this to be coming out of the barrel at sixteen hundred feet per second, thirty two grain, just screaming down range, and just absolutely drilling a hole through the target. And this is where um, it got very interesting. For the first time, I had four light primer strikes. And I do blame the rifle, the rifle for that because, again, I had not cleaned this rifle 
in all of the sessions that went out there. In fact, one in between one session, I bought this Norma, bought some Norma ammo just to shoot and have fun with. And that was uh, ammo that had some kind of waxy cosmoline uh, coating on it. And, and, that, and a 100 degree temperature, it was just like slippery, buttery bullets. Um, but I did have four, about four light primer strikes. Now during a ceasefire, I put the gun in the rack uh, behind me in direct sunlight. And when I came back after the ceasefire to grab that rifle, it was so hot that I could not grab it by the metal. And I don't know if that was a, a, a factor in what was going on or if this rifle just doesn't like a 32 grain bullet going 1600 per second. Um, again, the ammo first time had some problem with the ammo. And uh, the results were actually very, very shocking to me at least. So here, here is Stingers. Um, I do not know what happened here. Um, again, uh, I do have a nice, nice little drilled out center, but then I have all these bizarre flyers all over the place. Um, and it was some, I'm really not just flyers. I'm talking about, I got, I got, I got a, a rounds off off of the silhouette itself on the white paper which is absolutely just mind-blowing and uh i don't know why actually um so i figured uh maybe uh the rifle was dirty maybe that that norma ammo i was shooting was just gummed it all up again i did have four black primer strikes uh, strikes that was un unusual for the stingers um so i just uh, assumed maybe it was just so dirty uh, that I was uh, just getting some blood, bad, bad uh, fouling and just throwing rounds everywhere. But literally, I was throwing flyers all over the place, and that is not what I'm used to seeing from stingers. Because a lot of times stingers are a nice, tight, grouping ammo because it's very consistently loaded. And this here uh, was not. Um, so that forced that forced me to just crash my head, take the gun home. Uh, yank the Model 94 apart, which is a pain in the butt, uh, and clean it and take it back out. Uh, in fact, before I even did all that, I let the, I let the barrel cool, uh, pop, you know, pop some rounds in the little, little, little side, uh, bottom target. I got, I got put another, I put another target out there to see what I was doing. And okay, that's, that's fair. That's, that's, that's decent. So let me go to the center, center target. And then again, I started getting flyers all, all over the place. Um, the scope was tight. Um, then I was thinking maybe maybe something inside the scope so loose and jiggly or something. Um, but yeah, that was the uh, the results that I got on that day. So like I said, I did go home, clean the rifle, and uh, that would be a part five. <laughs>